Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Yeah, say to the person beside you, good morning to you. Yeah, pag hindi ka tinignan, ibig sabihin galit sa'yo yan. Okay. Well, anyway, welcome uh, to part three of our series on pride and humility. The title is Claim of Thrones. So we're now in part three. How many of you have listened to the part one and part two so far with Pastor Regina? Okay, good. So for those of you who may not have uh, heard yung mga sermons before, nasa, ano yan, nasa YouTube yan. YouTube, ano ba yan? Pronunciation, YouTube. Okay. Nasa uh, Get Real app natin yan. It's everywhere. Anyway, nasa website natin yan. So, let's uh, pray and let's uh, uh, continue our conversation about pride and humility. So, let's bow our heads. Father, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for Father's Day. Thank you for the time. Now, we can all uh, just remember and uh, Give honor to our dads, to our fathers. Salamat po, Panginoon, uh, that uh, merong mga tatay na patuloy na who give of their lives, who give everything, Panginoon, sacrificing everything for the sake of their loved ones, their families. Thank you, Lord, for them. We honor them, Panginoon. And so as we continue, dear Lord, uh, in this discussion or conversation about pride and humility, I pray that you would continue to speak to us and uh, help us to understand ourselves, more importantly, Panginoon. Uh, not so much ibang tao, whether they are prideful or not, but ourselves, oh God, our own hearts. Deliver us, Panginoon, uh, sa subtle na problem or sin of pride, and help us, Lord God, to practice humility in our daily lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, and all of God's people say, Amen. Purihin ang ating Panginoon. Well, Talo. Talo kami. Okay? So, how many of you here are warrior fans? Warriors? Ano kayo? That's your team? Okay, konti na lang po tayo. So, nakikiramay po ako. Uh, condolences. Okay? The Raptors won. So, how many of you are Raptor fans? Raptors? Okay, good for you. This is your day. Okay? Congratulations. <laughs> Interestingly, my son, who used to be talagang a fan of the Warriors, shifted his allegiance, you know. So, uh, naging ano na siya ngayon, uh, uh, Raptor fan na siya, okay? And I was asking him, bakit biglang gusto niya yung Raptors? Because dati, ano siya, you know, warrior siya. Well, I think there was some time na nag-change din siya. But I asked him and he said na, kasi daw, lagi nilang panalo ang Warriors. Diba? Dapat naman matalo naman sila paminsan-minsan, na manalo naman yung Raptors. Okay, all Raptor fans say amen. Wala, wala gay amen. Okay. So, <coughs> I think for the things about tao, when it comes to other people, we don't want people na parang to be prideful sa kanila mga successes. Di ba? I mean, like in the case of sports nga, okay? Iniisip ng mga tao, masyado na marami yung championship, ang Warriors. Pagbigyan naman yung iba. Huh? Iba naman naman nalo, okay? Why is that? You know, why, why are people thinking like that? Uh, and I'm beginning to just uh, think about this. Bakit pagdating sa ibang tao, we are so sensitive kapag yung feeling natin na parang pumuputa sa ulo nila, you know, yung, yung kanilang mga success o yung kanilang kagalingan. It, it goes to their heads. And we're uh, parang concerned kasi yung mga tao na mauhusay, and to be fair, no? pareho namang team na mauhusay yan, di ba? Warriors and Raptors, pareho magagaling. Amen? Please agree. Okay. Pareho sila magagaling. All right? If they're both good. But anyway, Siguro magaling talaga teamwork ng Raptor, so hats off, okay? Galing sila. But whenever we see some, someone or some, anybody na parang nag excel parang we are concerned kasi baka pumunta sa ulo nila yung kanilang husay o galing. And, and I think even in the, in the, in the arena of movies, napapansin ko, no? Yung mga superheroes, when I, when I watch mga Marvel or whatever, di ba? Kapag sinyo yung mga superheroes, hindi na sila parang super. Okay? In fact, for example, uh, if I look back to sa mga movies na pinalabas, si Superman ang matay. Okay? I mean, that was unthinkable during my time. You know, si Superman ang mamatay, parang, ang, di ba? Pero ngayon, parang pinapatay na si Superman, pati si Iron Man. Imagine that. Pati si Iron Man ang mamatay. So, these superheroes are no longer super. Why is that? Because people are saying basically, Wag naman parang super galing to mga heroes na to. Diba? Gawin naman natin sila parang realistic. Bigyan natin sila ng kotting failure. 
Okay? And I, and I begin to just reflect upon that. But these ibang tao were so sensitive, were so concerned, na kapag magaling siya, iniisip natin, nako, baka yumabang yan. But seldom do we actually apply the same principle to ourselves. One of the things na siguro paulit-ulit na namin sinasabi in this series is that pride is a hidden problem. It's a subtle problem. Very few of us actually would be aware na meron tayong pride problem. No? Well, in fact, pag ang isang tao parang nagkukunwari, you know, nagpe-pretend, we immediately know na that person has a pride problem. Alimbawa, pag sinabi ng isang tao, kamukha ko si Piolo Pascual. Sino ngaling? Di ba? Or sasabihin ng iba sa inyo, oh, kamukha ko si Pio Works back, whatever, di ba? You're, you're a liar. In other words, when somebody's telling something na alam mo naman obviously is not true, they sabi natin, yabang yan. Okay? And we ourselves, of course, we will not say things like that. But here's the problem I think na parang hindi natin siguro na-recognize. Because there is in our hearts a problem. And that is, pagdating sa area ng ating strengths, whenever meron tayo, and all of us have strengths, by the way, okay? Uh, let me just take a survey right now. Ilan sa inyo, aware kayo na may strength kayo? Somewhere in some, ano, okay? Ay, siguro kahit guwapo lang kayo, may feeling yun. I mean, parang katulad nakita kong t-shirt. Kung kasalanan ang guwapo, sorry na. You know, parang gano'n. Okay, so, how many of you feel like <coughs> somehow meron ka namang strength? May mga galing ka magluto, Magaling ka kumanta. Come on, raise up your hands. Don't be humble. Just be honest. Okay? Good. Some of you parang, hindi, wala. Wala ako talaga kakwenta-kwentang tao. So we're sorry about you. But all of us have some kind of strength. <clears throat> and here's what I'm trying to drive at as we begin this conversation. You see, it's hard to be humble when you know you have strengths. Okay? Now, of course, pag isang tao sasabihin niya na pogi siya, sabi, matatawa tayo sabihin natin na, ang kapal naman ng mukha mo. But what if pogi siya talaga? Amen? Just look at the person beside you. What if ko talaga maganda talaga yan? Right? I mean, kung, kung siya ay parang, alam mo na, yung, yung mukha niya parang, alam mo na, ganun. At pag sinasabi niya maganda siya, parang, di ba kadiri? Pero what if talagang maganda naman siya? And what if you know na maganda ka? Tingnan mo yung katabi mo, sabi mo, pasensya ka na, sorry ha, talagang ganyan. Maganda lang ako talaga, o, o pogi lang ako talaga. <coughs> or matalino ka, okay? Magaling ka mag-analyze. Or maybe you're the kind of person na leader ka. You may have strengths and you know it. I hear, listen, listen carefully now. It's hard to be humble when you know you have strengths. But let me add to that. It's equally or even more so challenging para sa atin when you are challenged or when you are parang experiencing something that directly is dealing with your strength. Let me just illustrate that. Kung magaling ka magluto and somebody says na ang pangit naman ito niluto mo, that really offends you. Right? Because it's an area of which you think na parang magaling ka naman. Di ba? If you are, for example, smart sa area ng finances or business and somebody criticizes you on that or kaya naka-experience kind of failure sa area na yun, it just, it's, it has a different effect sa iyo. Okay? Unlike if it's something na alam mo naman, na-recognize mo naman, mahina ka doon, so it doesn't really bother you kung sakali mo mapuna ka doon. But if it's an area na parang you feel naman na mahusay naman ako dito, like maybe some of you feel like parang you deserve that promotion. Or you should be in that particular position in the company. Pero for some reason, they pass you up. And you feel offended by that. So a lot of us are, do not, are not really aware that there is a pride issue dwelling underneath sa puso natin. Especially in the area of our strengths. As you are about to recognize ngayong umaga na to, I hope you will open your heart. Because most of the time, yung strength mo is also your weakness. In other words, kung saan ka magaling, madalas, doon ka nasusubukan sa kayabangan. Okay? Hindi ka naman magmamalaki sa mga area ng buhay na para feeling mo hindi ka magano ka-confident. Ah, pero pag, let's say, matalino ka at medyo napag-uusapan ng katalinuhan, 
Aba, maapekto ka na, and you will react, and you will, and people will see it in your face, na iirita ka. If, for example, they're questioning your intelligence. Or if somebody's parang putting you down, saying, in effect, na wala kang alam. Aba, ibang usapan na yan. So most of us are not really aware that there is a pride issue dwelling inside our hearts. Only it appears lang, only it becomes obvious to everyone else, kasi kapag nasalti na yung area ng strength mo, alright, pag yung kagandahan mo na, in knowing na maganda ka talaga, pag yung kagandahan mo na ang kinwestiyon, aba, ibang usapan na yan. Ilan sa'yo nakaka-relate dito na maganda kayo? Yo, may nagtaas sa bandang likod. Pero maliit lang ang kamay niya. Para... Gusto niya magpaka-humble. Ha? You know, ikaw ay gwapo, tapos pinagpalit ka sa hindi naman kasing gwapo mo, parang it's just iba ang dating, di ba? And you will react to that. You will say something to the effect na pinagpalit mo ako dyan. Yun. And most people are not even aware the pride is showing up. Because yun nga sinasabi ko sa inyo. It is in the area or in those areas where we might be strong that actually we can be very weak. And so, there's, a, there's a, a letter in the Bible. It's called 2 Corinthians. Now, I chose this book because, as you well know, the Apostle Paul is really quite a talented man. Kung meron kayong time and you read his life, a book of Acts, you will notice na he's really quite a man. Ginamit siya ng Panginoon to write more than half of the New Testament. Okay? A very talented, a very spiritual man. And yet, dito sa book na to, na 2 Corinthians, this one is quite personal. Last week, uh, Pastor Regina, you know, read the book of Philippians to you and she explained to you kung ano ang ibig sabihin nun. And the book of Philippians, just like the book of Galatians and the book of Ephesians, are all dealing with the problem of yung gospel mismo, yung message. And how most people are distorting that message. But not this book. In this particular incident sa 2 Corinthians, the problem was not the message of Paul. The problem was, pinipersonal siya na kanyang mga opponents. They were actually questioning him as an apostle. Hindi yung mensahe niya. Hindi sila nakipag-debate sa mensahe niya. They're questioning him as an apostle. In fact, they are throwing insults at him, basically saying, in effect, wala kang kwenta, Paul. And maybe some of you are not aware Sa Bible kasi natin mayroong 1st and 2nd Corinthians, but actually scholars believe there is a, another letter in between those two letters. Yung tinatawag na the severe letter, which is technically dapat yun the 2nd Corinthians, but because God willed it in such a way, now we don't have a copy of that. It was not preserved. So all we have are 1st Corinthians and 2nd Corinthians. Pero the incidents uh, being reflected in those letters are of the same a kind. It's all about itong trial na ginugo through ni Paul as an apostle kung saan kinu-question siya at basically isinasantabi yung kanyang authority. Because there were some people who were claiming na si Paul was walang kwenta. And that was a very personal thing. So I think uh, will ni Lord na huwag na preserve yung talagang gitnang letter na yon, severe letter, because I suspect yung letter na yon eh, siguro maanghang. Probably Paul was really affected by it. Okay? Such that siguro yung mga sinulat niya talaga hindi na inspired. More like perspired na. Parang yun, galit na galit siguro. But God preserved 2 Corinthians. And specifically, kung kayo ay meron time, read chapters 10 to 12. Kasi in those three chapters, 10, 11, 12, we can find yung pinaka-personal na sulat ni Pablo, almost as if parang he's bearing his own soul. Babaga, yung Paul, the apostle, the powerful leader, suddenly dito sa letter na to, especially chapters 10 to 12, talagang re-reveal niya yung puso niya. Okay? And you can see that he's really struggling. But it's also good na he went through that kasi out of that experience, he shares with us a very important uh, theme or topic na dapat din natin matutunan. And that is how God helps us to stay humble. Isipag ikaw ay merong mga strengths. 
may kakayanan ka. Magaling ka kumawit. Magaling ka magsulat. Magaling ka magsalita. Magaling ka magbusiness. Whatever strengths you might have. Most of us do not really recognize na yun kadalasan ang gagamitin ng kaaway to deceive us to becoming proud. And so God in His mercy does a surgery kind of work sa puso natin allowing certain experiences sa buhay natin to teach us and to, to train us how to stay humble. And we should be thankful to God for those experiences. However, let me say this, those of us na mayroong mga strength o meron tayong mga gifts or talents or capacities na maaring feeling natin, you know, bigay ni Lord sa atin yan, and sure enough, it is. Pero, pag yun na kasi yung, ano, na, naapektuhan, whether it's an experience, or somebody, kapamilya mo, or anyone else, na parang, siya yung mismo parang nagiging source na ikaw ay mas stress, because it's an area that you believe you don't deserve na makriticize ka doon. I mean, that person has no right to look down on you in that area because, my goodness, straight ko yan eh. Alright? If somebody were to criticize yung, yung drawing mo at alam mo na magaling kang mag-draw, I mean, who are you? So we all respond in, in, in a way na, na hindi faithful to God sa, pag sa area na ganyan. Kaya, here's the problem. God works in us. Meron siyang surgical work sa puso natin. And we don't like it. Listen carefully. How many, of time, how many times sa buhay natin, pag uh, nalalagay tayo sa sitwasyon na kung saan parang hindi yun ang gusto natin, that we actually complain to God about it. You say, Lord, bakit ang fair naman niya? Bakit siya na-promote? Eh, mas magaling naman ako doon. Eh Lord, bakit mo inaalaw na mag-fail ako? I did my best, but I guess my best is not good enough. So sometimes we resist the very thing that God brings into our lives to humble us. We actually kick ourselves and complain and cry out to God, God, you're so unfair. When in fact, God is helping you to be humble. Are you listening? Sige, tunin mo, kausapin mo yung katabi mo, sabihin mo, <coughs> mukhang naiintindi ako na. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, mukhang naiintindi ako na. Kung anong ginagawa ni Lord sa'yo. <laughs> but I want us to understand more about ourselves, okay? Amen? How God helps us to stay humble. And there are three ways, okay? My goal dito sa sermon na to is to give you understanding and wisdom Para pag may nangyayaring ganito, instead of complaining and blaming God, instead of reacting in a negative way, di ba? Alam mo na yung attitude natin, di ba? Pag nasasalte yung ating strength, ayoko na, bahala na kayo dyan, sige kayo na! Instead of reacting in a very foolish and childish way, I want you to be able to say to God, now this is for those na merong strength, and at the same time you seek God, okay? Let me qualify that. Kasi as I talk about this, baka isipin nyo, buti na lang, lasinggero ako. No, hindi. That is not the point here. I'm talking about you seeking God and then there are negative things that are happening in your life. So pag nangyari yun, and you know in your heart naman that you want to glorify God, pero parang inaalaw niya certain things in your life, and you're questioning Him, I want you to change your attitude and say, God, thank you. Sabihin nyo nga po, thank you. Thank you for teaching me how to be humble. Amen? Alright? Because if God does not do that, alam nyo naman, di ba? Kunyari, magaling ka kumanta. So, yung galing mo kumanta can become your Achilles heel. Maaaring yan ang maging source ng pride mo and if God is not going to intervene, magmamalaki ka because magaling ka kumanta. Meron ba rito mga magagaling kumanta? Okay, yun ang angarap na sa imagination mo, magaling ka kumanta. Okay. So, nakikiramay ako sa mga kapitbahay nyo. Malamang, panay ang karaoke nyo. Okay? So, yung kapitbahay nyo, sila yung nagpipray. Lord, kunin nyo na sila. Okay? And so, let's talk about the three ways that God is at work in your life. Okay, number one. Okay? Number one is God limits our influence. This may be hard for us to accept. Pero out of His mercy, He actually limits your influence. Now, you may think parang, 
I think I can do more. I, I think I'm capable of more than this. I think I can handle that position, and maybe that is true. But God, in His mercy, intentionally limits your influence. Now, see, si Paul, if you read the chapter 10 of 2 Corinthians, one of the things that makikita nyo, the context, of, by the way, from verse 1 to 12, the context is that some people were questioning his authority. They were saying basically na parang, oh, he only looks parang impressive sa letters niya. Pero in person, wala namang kwenta si Paul eh. And so Paul was agitated. Sabi niya, ah, ganun. Pagpunta ko dyan sa Corinth, maghanda kayo. Because whoever I am in my letters, you will now see me in person. Pero nahimasmasan si Paul. <laughs> Probably true naman talaga yon Because maybe in his letter, he's a bit uh, medyo team, you know, weak and mild. You know, parang gano'n. But actually, sabi niya, don't be deceived by that. Kasi I have the authority of Christ. Pero as he reflected on what was happening, he said this at verse 13. Sabi niya, we however will not boast beyond proper limits. Now you see, na-recognize niya. Now whatever it is na kaya niyang gawin o nagagawa niya, it's really a gift from God. One of the things na kailangan ma-recognize sa buhay mo, and sometimes parang hindi mo nga nakikita, is whenever na meron ka mga talent, you think you deserve the world. You think na kahit anong bagay kaya mo. And sometimes God limits that. Not because He hates you, but because so that He can train you. Not to rely sa mga giftedness mo, skills mo, but to rely on Him. But teka muna, we all go through this. Sabi niya, uh, we however will not boast beyond proper limits, but will confine our boasting to the spirit of service God Himself has assigned to us. A spirit that also includes you. So nung si Paul was really parang sobering up and realizing what was going on, may mga tao na question nag-challenge sa kanya, pero sabi niya, you know, Whatever it is na ginagawa ko, I realize it is God's sovereignty and God's grace sa akin, sa akin to have this kind of parang ministry. At ito ay may spear. Sabi nyo nga po, spear. That was my limitation. Now, let me just apply that uh, in my own case. Now, I thank the Lord. Hindi naman ako nagmamalaki, but I thank the Lord. And I, I hope others will confirm that. Na meron ako mga gifts and talents when it comes to leadership. Salama, thank you. I mean, I hope I hope na conf- confirm you. But but anyway, there was this particular experience na naranasan ko kung saan I was offered a ministry wherein I would be able to handle hindi mo malaking grupo but a, a good organization na uh, was it was really para exciting and I felt that para wow, thank you Lord. Pero I went away for a while and then when I came back, I was removed from that position. Now, I didn't know at that time that there was pride in me. Pero ang reaction ko was that, Bakit? Kaya ko naman yun ah. I mean, I'm more than capable of doing that. And I began complaining to God. God, I said, why did you allow this to happen to my life? I think I can do that job. How many of you have sometimes felt na parang, Lord, deserving naman ako dun ah. I can do it. Maybe some of you are really bright and intelligent. Inisip mo, ako dapat yung suma kong laude eh. Bakit siya? Eh, mas magaling ako doon. At pag tinignan mo yung grades ko, mas di hamak naman na karapat dapat ako sa ganung klaseng posisyon o title. Now, something that we all need to understand is whenever nasasalti yung strength mo, and especially if it is true, I'm not talking about yung nagsisinungaling ka. I'm talking about the fact na, ba, alimbawa, ikaw talaga naman siguro pinakagwapo sa campus. Okay. I mean, wala, wala naman kaduda-duda. Pag in-elect ka talaga, ikaw na yung pinakapogi. Okay? Kaso pinagpalit ka niya sa isang tao ni, na, kumbaga, kulang sa paligo. <laughs> Di hamak naman na lamang ka doon. And it's so, you it just, you know, you're nursing this resentment sa puso mo because you feel like parang, Lord, bakit hindi mo binibigay sa akin yung opportunity na? It could be a job. It could be a promotion. It could be a title na parang feeling mo, Lord, kaya ko naman yun. And yet, God purposely limits. Nilalagay ka niya doon sa pwesto na parang feeling mo na parang, Lord, mas kaya ko pa yung ibang bagay, higit pa dito, why don't you give it to me? And si Paul was reflecting upon the grace of God sa buhay niya. At sabi niya, I now realize na God is the one 
giving every person yung spirit of influence niya. Okay? And you are to be faithful with that. Kasi ganito, ka, sabi niya, we are not going too far in our boasting, sabi niya. As would be the case if we had not come to you. But, for we did get as far as you with the gospel of Christ. No, okay, bata pa tapos sa ministry, I used to parang feel envious do sa mga ibang mga pastor who somehow parang isang, isang salita na lang parang lumalago na agad yung church na lang. And, I, and there was one particular experience na naalala ko sa boy ko. I attended one particular church and there were thousands of people. Okay? Sabi ko sa mga, wow, ang daming tao. And then he started preaching. And as, as he was preaching, alam mo yon yung pride ko parang mali, mali, mali ang exig- mali, mali ang exegesis, hindi tama. You know, but, bakit ang daming tao samantalang mali yung preaching niya? And God had to deal with my own pride issue. Because it was an area that I felt like I was better than that man. Listen carefully now. Lahat tayo may mga area of strengths. At yung strengths natin, most of the time, yan yung ating mismong weakness. Kasi pag yan na yung inatake, at kapag yan na yung parang, ano, parang pinupulaan, your pride begins to appear and you may not even be aware of it. And the reason why God is allowing that, para makrecognize mo how prideful you are. Look at the person beside you, sabihin mo, hindi ko alam. Say to the person beside you, Sige, huwag ka magsalita ako, talaga prideful ka. Pero kung hindi ka prideful, say to the person beside you, I realize, bakit nililimit ni Lord ang influence po? <laughs> At ang influence ko. So, let's read this. Sabi ka sa verse 15. Neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our spirit of activity among you will greatly expand. So here's the revelation ke Paul. Sabi niya, I now realize, whatever it is na nagagawa ko, it's from God. And if I'm going to be faithful to God, kung gaano kaliit yun, then God himself will expand it in his own good time. Kung ipopromote man ako ng Panginoon, it is by his grace and goodness. At kung hindi man, I will remain where I am with thankfulness of heart. Amen? You see, God is training us. Lalo lang pag super talented ka. Okay? How many of you dito parang feeling mo hindi lang naman isa ang talent mo? Come on. Talaga? Wala kayong talent kahit kumain, gano'n, matulog. Gano. How many of you believe na parang hindi lang naman isa ang talent ko? Come on, I want to see some hands. Uh, this is not about pride. This is just honesty. Honesty lang naman. Okay. How many of you saan mo hindi ka lang naman isang talent? No? Hindi yung parang ito lang kaya mo gawin. There are other things na kaya mong gawin. Di ba? Come on, raise up yan. There are things that kaya mong gawin. Yeah, of course. All of us here, di ba? But remember, pag multi-talented ka, yan din ang nagiging dahilan bakit nagiging prideful ka. Amen? Alright. So, that's the first thing that God does. He actually limits our influence. Now, second, God limits our control. Now, this is especially true for my kind of personality. Kasi yung personality ko nga is because as a leader, I tend to, you know, want to just control things or make sure that things are in order. And that is good, okay lang yun. Unless, of course, hindi ko na-recognize minsan that I can, I can be overly controlling. Okay? Now, some of you might be thinking, well, hindi naman ako controlling. Eh. Really? Pag hindi nahugasan yung pinggan ng tama, how do you respond? Okay? Pag yung suot ng asawa mo ay medyo hindi terno, how do you respond? Di ba? Do you say, ano ba naman klaseng damit niya? Wala ka bang alam? <laughs> and oftentimes, this is a very subtle kind of thing, almost parang invisible sa'yo. But everybody sees it. Now, lahat tayo kasi, all of us, lalo na mga magulang, how many parents are here? Okay, as parents, siyempre, ba? We want our families to be parang picture perfect, ika nga. Okay? Kaya nga naapektuhan tayo. Whenever parang meron mga chismis o balita na parang, you know, that attacks your family, di ba? Or kaya alam mo na parang may nang, huwag, naku, mahiya, kakahiya sa pamilya natin niya. Huwag mong sasabihin niya. Okay? 
Ano sasabihin ko? Magsinugali ka. Huwag mo lang sasabihin yung totoo. Because we are also concerned about how we appear to other people. We want our <coughs> families to be just right. Ayaw natin na maging out of control ito. Now, I want, I want to focus now on the Apostle Paul because yung experience niya really touches deep down inside me. Ewan ko sa inyo. But let's, you know, if you, if you read book uh, chapter 11, how many of you have read 2 Corinthians 10, 11, 12? Okay. How many of you know na meron ganun sa Bible? You know, 2 Corinthians. Well, that's good enough. Okay, so let's start there. Okay? Basahin nyo yung 2 Corinthians, not only chapter 11. Now, if you read, let me type here. If you read verses 1 to 29. Now, kung naalala nyo, si Pastor Regina read Philippians 3. And there was that short passage there kung saan Paul was saying, you know, I'm a Hebrew, ganyan-ganyan. Pag kinumpil mo yung sa listahan dito sa chapter 11, ang mag reaction mo dun sa kwento ni Paul was parang, Oh, you're the man. Parang gelo, parang how to be you na. Parang ganun the thing. Because if you read yung kwento niya from verse 1, chapter 11, verse 1 hanggang verse 29. Hindi lang niya basta sinasabing background niya. He was say he was telling kono yung mga pinagdaraanan niya, suffering and sacrifices at so many trials at yung kanyang concern for everybody, talaga nilista niya lahat yun. By the time na matapos ka, parang impressed na impressed ka na kay Apostle Paul. And in fact, <coughs> how many of you know yung background ni Apostle Paul? How many of you know who he is? Well, he is the, the man, di ba? Na nung bago maging Christian yun si Paul. Siya yung persecutor ng church. He was parang talagang very aggressive. He was the man na sabi nga niya, parang he persecuted the church. He was not the kind of person that we are about to read. Because let's read this. Verse 30, ito sabi niya. If I must boast, now remember your context, he was saying all about those things na ginagawa niya, pero sabi niya, if I must boast, I will boast of the, about the things, of the things pala, that show my weakness. And so we're waiting. Ano kaya sasabihin niya? Sabi niya, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. Now why is he saying that? Kasi what, what, what he's about to narrate dito sa susunod na verse, babasahin natin, is totally out of character kay Paul. It is parang, ha? Huh? Parang kung ikaw kinuwento ni Paul, sinabi niya sa'yo na ito actually nangyari sa akin eh. You would say, really? Joke, joke, joke? Nangyari sa ito? So let's read it. Tingnan nyo, ha? Here's what he says. In Damascus, the governor under King Aretas had the city of the Damas, Damas scenes, okay, mga taga Damasco, okay? Guarded in order to arrest me. Now look at verse 33. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through his hands. Now you might think about it. Okay, go ahead, Paul. No, he's saying something really very embarrassing. Okay? Uh, dito sa particular na incident na to, hindi si Paul na matapa, hindi si Paul na ready mamatay para kay Kristo, Si Paul na nilagay sa basket. Hindi lang siya nilagay sa basket. Binutasan niyo wall at doon siya nilabas. Parang kumbaga, umis ka po siya in the most, un, ano tawag natin dyan, parang, you know, that the kind of thing na parang namatay siya pa, binabala, parang haba binabaral ka, di ba? Martyr! Freedom! You know, hindi ganun. He was lowered to his shame. Ika nga parang siya sabi niya, I'm not lying. This is really what happened to me. Why is he saying that? Because sa totoo lang talaga, he had all those strengths and capacities to do great things for the Lord. Pero sabi niya, God has allowed me to be embarrassed. God has allowed me to be helpless. Let's think about our own experiences. Okay? I remember a friend of mine who was really very successful in all areas of his life. Pati sa ministry talaga naman is all over the place. Yung pangalan niya, parang umaaling I won't tell you the name, but basically this person is really quite famous. Ang dami niya na-accomplish, ang galing niya. Talaga full of strength. At yung pamilya niya, talaga naman, wala akong masabi, ang babait ng mga anak niya, yung asawa niya, okay lahat. At yung business niya mas was flourishing. Everything was just right. At feeling mo parang siya na yung pinagpala ni Lord. And then one, one day, things began to unravel. Okay? Well, there was a series of parang unfortunate events. Now, slowly, nagkaroon, na, nagkaroon siya ng karamdaman, so he was 
bedridden, and then, you know, yung, yung negosyo niya na, na lugi, tapos yung mga anak niya nagkaroon ng problema, yung pamilya niya nagkaroon ng tension. In other words, everything, everything that he doesn't want to happen in his family happened. And he was questioning God, God, bakit mo inalaw ito? Parang si Job. Right? If you read the story of Job. Why did you allow this to happen in my life? And he was so parang afraid na kasi parang, Lord, mahal mo pa ba ako? You know, it all happens to us, pag, lalo na pagdating sa area ng ating control. We don't want anything to happen to our bodies. We don't want anything to happen to our families. Okay? Meron ba nagpipray sa inyo na, Lord, sana magkasakit ang mga pamilya ko. You know? Wala lang pipray ng ganun. If I ask people, you know, what is your prayer? Sana lang, good health, you know, peace of family. What if pag wala, mawala lahat yun? How many of us would react? Because sometimes, hindi lang tayo aware. The area ng buhay natin, ng kontrolado natin, is also the area of pride. We think na para oh, this is okay, my family is okay, my job is okay, my career is okay. Yung relationship ko sa boyfriend ko, it's okay until one day mabalitaan mo na meron siyang minimit na iba. And suddenly, it all shatters your dream. Because once you begin to lose control, feeling mo parang anong kwenta pa ng buhay ko. Now, what most people don't understand is that God may actually be orchestrating that. God may be actually allowing you to lose control because you're so proud of the fact that you are in control. Now, I don't mean to say na parang God is parang a cruel God na bibigyan niya tayo ng karamdaman or anything like that. What I'm saying is that sometimes hindi lang natin na-recognize na yung misan, because of our stubbornness, misan God allows us to have akang-ikang experiences <coughs> that shows how weak we are. Are you listening? So, bago ka magreklamo kay Lord, parang, Lord, ba't mo ina-allow it? Bakit nagkakaganito yung buhay ko? Maybe you should give thanks to God. Maybe you should say, God, I'm so thankful to you na bagamat nangyayari itong mga bagay ito sa buhay ko, alam ko na I am not in control, but you are. Amen? You are still sovereign. You are still seated on the throne. You are still my king. You know, interestingly, how many of, how many of dito totoo ito, na pag, pag nasa maganda kang kalagayan, you remember all the verses. Tapos, may nagdaan ka na ng trial, you cannot remember a single one. Di ba? How many of us begin to just unravel pag nawala na tayo ng control, samantala nasa scripture naman yun. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord is my shepherd. Di ba na sa Bible yun? Why is it na pag mayroong mga experiences tayo na negative, we just forget those things. Okay? It just shows us talaga na most of the time, di tayo aware, na we feel so confident sa sarili natin because everything is under our control. Now, I don't mean to say again, para matakot kayo na para, ayan, naku, paano nang gagawin ni Lord sa akin? No. I want us, I want us to all understand na minsan, yung pride natin nakatago. Yung pride natin hindi obvious. Are you listening? Di ba? But only when that particular area na parang source of strength mo, yung skill mo, yung abilidad mo, yung position mo, yung pera mo sa bako, when that is the one that is touched, then lalabas talaga na yun ang source of pride mo. Right? Are you listening? Mukhang galit na yata kayo. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, parang galit kayo yata kay pastora. I'm just teaching you the word of God. Okay? Now, number three, is God limits our victories. Ah, we don't like this, di ba? Kasi gusto natin, lagi may victory. Di ba? Gusto na, pag tayo nagsishare, nakarinig di ba kayo ng mga sharing na ganito, para, ayun, uh, pinag-pray ko siya, namatay. So ako naman, you know, humingi ako kay Lord ng pera, nalugi, you know. Tapos yung business ko, pinag-pray ko umasin. So, yung buwaksak, hallelujah, you know. No, we, 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 we testify to one another all the good stuff. At yun din ang ina-expect natin kay Lord. Lord, bless me, bless me indeed. Now, Si Paul was really a blessed man. If you have the time, I want you to read chapter 12, lalo na in verse 1 to 6, which is the context, hindi ko na nilagay dito. Pero verses 1 to 6 talks about yung special experiences ni Paul. Kung saan binigyan siya ng special vision. 
of sabi niya na parang third heaven. You know? In fact, it was so it was so wonderful na hindi nga niya masabi siya yun. Hindi niya matukoy na ako nakaranas noon. Hindi niya ma-admit yun. Parang sabi niya, there was a man. No? He experienced this. Actually, he's talking about himself. He's saying basically na meron siya mga supernatural experiences that were really parang amazing. Na ilang ba sa inyo rito na pag, yun na bago ka matulog, kinakausap mo muna si Jesus, tapos si Jesus kinakausap ka pabalik. Anybody here? You know, can you imagine the person, di ba, waking up in the morning, nga pala, nag-usap kami ni Jesus sa gabi. Oo, how to be you na. Okay. Right, that would be amazing. But si Paul, this was parang standard stuff sa kanya. I was, you know, I was, I was experienced. Sabi nga niya, yung mga signs of an apostle, yung mga miracles, yung mga signs and wonders, typical yan sa life ko, sabi ni Paul. Alright? I mean, how many of you can actually say that? So marami siya experiences na gano'n. So here's what he says, upon reflection, sabi niya. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. Now, that's one of, one of the most obscure statements of the Bible. A thorn in my flesh. What does that mean? Okay? Now, sa Old Testament, pag sinabing thorn, usually the first two people na makukulit, yun know, parang tayo, mga Pilipino, pag may makulit na tao, sinasabi natin, tinik yan eh. Di ba? Sa tagilirang ko, o kaya parang krus yan eh, yung tao na yan. So, it may be, he's referring to some people. Or maybe it's just the fact na may mga nangyayari sa buhay niya na hindi maganda. But here's what, here's what he says about that. A messenger of Satan. Yan ang kanyang description. A messenger of Satan. In other words, kung ano man to, itong thorn in the flesh na to, whatever that is, Satan is taking advantage of it, using it para iharas siya, para pahirapan siya. I don't know if it's parang a recurrent failure or even a sickness, but something really bad na ginagawang platform ni Satan para talagang pahirapan siya, you know, to make his life miserable. And so, sabi ko na ito, to torment me, yun ang sabi niya. Amen? So, three times, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. How many of you believe in the power of prayer? Raise up your hand. <coughs> I believe in the power of prayer. And normally, we expect na parang, Lord, if I pray, sabi, believe it, and you will receive it. Di ba? So, I don't know how Paul prayed in this particular instance, pero he prayed three times, and I think parang figure of speech yun. Hindi ibig sabihin, one, two, three. I think ibig sabihin nun, maraming beses. Okay? He was really praying for it. Now, look at the, what happened. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, look at that answer for a second. Imagine mo lang yan. You're going through something. Let's say maybe, siguro, kunyari, example lang na yung torn in the flesh mo, parang maybe asawa mo, or anak mo. At yung tao na yun, talagang, di ba, parang pasakit sa'yo. And you're praying, God. I've heard many wives say this to me. Lord, baguhin mo na yung asawa ko. Walang ginawa ko di maghimas ng manok. You know, wala kang maasahan, you know. Ayaw mag-lead spiritually. Kailangan atake mo pa, wala pa buta sa church. Panginoon, ipag pinagpipray ko yung asawa ko, baguhin mo yung asawa ko. Pag gising mo, kinabukasan, katabi mo pa rin siya. Okay? Ano siya sabi mo, Lord, pwede ba palitan mo na siya? Pwede exchange gift? <laughs> pwede ba isolid ko yung sa nanay niya? You know? Or meron kang anak na parang, you know, tamad, pag sila mo, oh, gising na, alas dos na ng hapon, you know, Ano ang pagkain natin? Lord, tulungan mo. Baguhin mo yung anak ko and God doesn't do anything. God doesn't answer your prayer. Para, Lord, you know, sana ito, itong tao na ito, babahalin ako, tapos sinisnab ka. Totally opposite sa pinagpipray mo. And sometimes you complain to God, why is this? As I would say to the Lord, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. Okay. So, pag tinignan mo yung katabi mo, tinignan mo, Lord, kailan kaya magbabago itong tao na ito? So, kundi, Lord, my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, the Lord is saying, whatever ang kailangan mo to be courageous, it's an all-encompassing word, to be to be strong in the Lord, to be to rejoice. Kung ano man yung kailangan mo in order for you to deal with that negative thing, my grace is sufficient for you. Yun lang ang kailangan mo. Lord, remove this. No? My grace is sufficient for you. Lord, tanggalin mo itong problem na ito. No? My grace is sufficient for you. Again, I'm not talking about yung mga sins mo na para, Lord, salamat ha. Ako ay sugalero at babayero. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hindi. Hindi yun ang sinasabi niya. He's talking about a person 
who's loving God and yet experiencing itong negative tone in the flesh sa parang feeling niya, Lord, had lang ito sa spirituality ko. And God does not remove it. God simply says, my grace is sufficient for you. Lord, ito trabaho ko masyadong limiting. Okay, my grace is sufficient for you. Lord, nahihirapan ako financially. I-bless mo ko. Nope. My grace is sufficient for you. So in each case, God answers Paul. Therefore, sabi ni Paul, na-realize siya, I will boast all the more gladly now, sabi niya, about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Na-realize siya na para, yeah, it's okay. It's okay na hindi na-answer yung prayer ko because maybe itong bagay na to na mahirap, na negative, this is what I need to stay humble and dependent on God. And he concludes, sabi niya, that is why, sabi niya, upon reflection, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So Paul realized na, yeah, as a Christian, mayroon mga tao na persecute sa akin, hindi inaalis ni Lord John. Why? Because it's for your good na nandun yung mga tao na yun in your life. So next time na mayroon kang pinagpipray na alisin na ni Lord, Tapos hindi niya inaalis. You know, give thanks to God. So, tinamoy ka tayo mong umiti ka sa'yo. Thank you, Jesus, for you. Okay? So, let me leave you with this idea. Okay? I want you to take this idea with you pag uwi ninyo. That God's limitation should not be a frustration, but an education. Tinuturuan ka ng Panginoon to rely on God, not on yourself. Remember, your strength mo can be your weakness. And yet at the same time, your weakness mo can be your strength. So as you reflect upon what's going on in your life, say to God, Lord, I now realize na even yung mga failures ko, even yung mga tao para nahihirapan ako to deal with, is all part of what you're doing in my heart to keep me humble, to teach me how to rely on you and not on myself. Did you learn something today? Amen? Ilan sa inyo dito na dating prideful pero unti-unti nagiging humble? Wala? Dati medyo prideful, medyo unti-unti nagiging humble. Taas sa kamay. Okay, ulitin namin itong series na ito hanggang di tayo magka- nagkakaroon ng mga humble people dito. How many of you dati medyo prideful ka pero ngayon na-realize mo na you know, God wants me to be humble. I want to be humble. Amen? Thank you for those hands. Will you just stand up right now?